Okay, so today I'm going to be telling you guys about luxating patellas. Um, but first I'm going to tell you kind of about what the normal knee anatomy looks like. So the knee is made up of different kind of parts. Um, it lies below the femur bone, which has this trochlear groove, which is above the stifle, which is basically just the knee in dogs. Um, then you have your actual patella, which is considered the kneecap, and behind that, like kind of back in this area, are cruciate ligaments. And then below you have your tibia and your fibula. And then you have this patellar ligament, which attaches from the muscles in your thigh to the shin bone. And what happens is when the muscles in your thigh contract, it pulls on this ligament and that is how you extend your leg. And when that happens, the patella will slide up and down within this groove and it goes just kind of directly up and down and not side to side. So there is. The only cartilage repair made So these are just more of your kind of internal aspects of the your knee joint. And the posterior cruciate ligaments are important ligaments that control the forward and backward motions of the knee joint. Okay, so the quadriceps is the most important muscle in the knee. It is the So that again just kind of shows kind of some more of the inner workings of the knee that aren't really able to be seen in this picture and kind of how the pulling and movement of this muscle kind of pulls these bones into the extension of the leg. So for luxating patellas, there's kind of four different types. Um, there's the medial luxation, which is kind of again, like when we looked at the previous video, how they showed the medial and the lateral tendons on the sides of the knee. Um, so there's medial luxation, which happens in toy, miniature, and large breeds. There's lateral luxation, which is mostly in toy and miniature breeds. Lateral luxation can also happen in large and giant breeds, but it's a different type. And then there's luxation that starts from trauma. So what a luxating patella basically is, is that your patella in the canine will shift out of this groove. And that can happen due to, especially in small breeds that are predisposed to it, if this ligament is not attached to the correct placement on the shin if it's not in the center. So when you flex the thigh and it pulls, it actually pulls this kneecap out of place to the side, which is kind of shown here and progressively. Um, and then as that continuously happens, it kind of corrodes the groove that the patella is in and that can lead to the shallowness, which makes it easier for it to slide out. And then again, it can happen if there's an injury or trauma. Typically with canines, it happens in both of their knees, but there are some cases where it is only in one. And within those knees, they can each have different grades or levels of patellar luxation. Um, most of the time with dogs, it's self-corrected. So dogs will kind of kick their legs or stretch them out in order to extend that muscle so that it pulls the patella back into place. Um, and typically it's also not very painful for the dog. So it's not typically that they're yelping or screaming or like having constant pain with it. Um, there's also varying levels and degrees. So this kind of shows you the different levels. So a zero is kind of a just normal knee, it stays in place. A one, you can manually move the patella out of place, but when you release it, it returns back to its normal positioning. A two is frequent luxation, and the animal will carry their limb with routine weight bearing. So they will go from kind of picking up their limb to putting it back down without any sort of consistency. Um, and they will weight bear and they will have a slight flex of their leg. Um, a three is a permanent luxation, but the limb is used semi-flexed, and a four, if I can get the clicker back up, 
The four is a permanent luxation with the trochlea, aka the groove, is completely absent, as you can see because of the corrosion, and the limb is carried in a flexed position. So those are kind of the different varying degrees of it. They're also called mild, moderate, and severe, and each knee can be different. So like with Holly, my dog, she has a grade one in one of her knees and a grade two in the other, but neither of them cause her pain or are impeding her quality of life. So she's currently in a stage where she's fine. Um, but it does, it's kind of just whether or not the knee place, the kneecap can be moved. If you can physically move the kneecap out of place, that's considered a grade one, which is kind of where she's mostly at now. Um, symptoms and predispositions. So most commonly this is in toy breed dogs where they have a genetic predisposition for it because their femurs are so small and the proportions of their body are different. Um, it's also an issue in bow-legged dogs because their knees are at odd angles. Um, and then the symptoms that you have kind of varies depending on the grade like we kind of talked about before, whether if it's a grade four and they can't put their leg down versus a grade two where they put it down and pick it up intermittently. This is kind of the leg stretching that I was talking about earlier where they self-correct. So if it falls out of place, they will stretch out their leg or they will kick it really quickly in order to try and pop that kneecap back into place. They will also do skipping where if they are running and playing, they'll kind of pick up their leg for a second and skip and then put it back down. They'll kick their leg, have favoring or limping in their legs, but again, it's sporadic. So a lot of times this is hard to diagnose because owners will see their dogs not using their legs for a brief period of time and then they'll return as if nothing had happened so they don't have continuous symptoms and so sometimes they'll be like oh that's just a weird coincidence and then it kind of went away so they'll assume it's fine um but frequently when it gets kind of worse they'll especially not use their leg when running so if a dog is always consistently running with only three of its legs then that's also kind of a sign that's happening and the predisposition is that it can also lead to other knee problems so it can mess with those cruciate ligaments that are behind the knee it can also help and lead to arthritis developing, which will cause further issues with walking on the leg, and it can also lead to other joint damage when they walk weirdly on their leg, popping their hips out of place and messing with their ankles. And then there's another video here that I'm just gonna kind of skip through. Um, this is a woman whose dog has a luxating patella, and so she shows kind of the different symptoms that he goes through. I think it wants to load. This one doesn't need sound. Um, so when he's going up the stairs, you can kind of see how he's kind of favoring this left leg and not really wanting to put weight on it for an extended period of time, which shows that he's having this issue with this leg bearing weight. He's kind of hopping, trying to avoid putting weight on it. Um, in this, you have videos of him running and you can see his leg kind of bowing outwards. And as he's running, it's in a weird formation because he's not putting his legs on the ground separately. He's picking them both up and kind of hopping so he doesn't have to put weight on that left leg. And then again, when he's walking, you can see how it kind of his knee specifically bows out and his wrist or ankle stays in the same place. And there should be, yeah, you can kind of see where it kind of is bowing out very drastically in this scenario. And again, it's in that back left leg. And if you notice, it's more noticeable when he's trotting or at a higher pace than when he's just walking. Uh, you can see it really well here where he has that kind of issue. And then there's also a front angle where you can still see again how he's kind of kicking this leg out in an attempt to kind of favor it and not use it as much and bear weight on it. So it is, it's popping out of place and it's causing his leg to kind of kick out. So those are some things to look for. So then the prognosis and treatment, again, with my dog, Holly, um, she is at a very low grade and it's not currently considered an issue because it's a grade one. So hers doesn't pop out very frequently on its own and she doesn't show any signs of pain or favoring on her legs. So she currently is at a position where she's fine, she's rather old, so if it was gonna get worse, it probably would have by now. She's had them for kind of years and they've been very stable. So a lot of times intervention isn't necessary, but if there are going to be corrective procedures, they should be done before other issues arise because if other issues are in the way of having the cruciate ligaments or having arthritis, then when you correct them, they still won't really have very great mobility with their legs and it will lead to an increased likelihood of it recurring. Um, but what can be done is there are surgeries that will correct the ligament placement if it's in the wrong position on the shin or they have surgeries that will deepen the groove so that the patella sits better in it after the corrosion happens or they can tighten capsules or sometimes put in implants but those are less common. Um, if you do surgery when there's a higher grade then there is a higher likelihood for recurrence of that coming back after the surgery which is again why you want to kind of do the prevention early on. And then they will also prescribe anti-inflammatories, joint supplements, and have you use joint health diet so that they kind of help the overall joint, again, if there's other issues going on or if there's anything else that they need to recover from, help with that. 
Weight loss is also a big concept. If the dog is overweight, it puts more pressure on the knees and the other joints, and so that can lead to further problems. And then there's also physical therapy that can be done with passive range of motion, doing weight bearing exercises, and at home treatments that owners can do to pop the kneecap back into place if it does ever luxate again. Let's give her a round of applause. Questions, comments? Yeah, mostly for smaller dogs. Mm -hmm. yeah, I've had a lot of dogs in my life, up to 180 pounds. Never had a let's say knee cap. Yeah. You know. Most so. of the time it is. It's the smaller breeds are predisposed. Never had their hip. Proportion of their right. Food. I've never had hip dysplasia either in any of those dogs, which is amazing. Yeah.